Welcome to Celestial Insights, a weekly podcast that brings the stars down to earth. I'm your host, astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks. My purpose is to provide practical, unique, and insightful guidance to help you navigate the energies of the week like a boss. Hello, this is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste, and on this episode, I will discuss the astrology for the week of June 4th, 2023. First, I want to remind you that I host monthly new moon workshops where we dive deep into the astrology of the lunation, what it might mean for you. I do hot takes on people's natal charts where the astrology truly comes alive. There's also often something I teach about astrology that's relevant to the chart or bring up what's going on in the collective. So it's a wonderful community event where you can socialize with other people who are spiritual adventurers interested in astrology and working with the moon and get guidance on intention setting as well. So the next workshop is June 15th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. They're hosted on Zoom. It's for the Gemini New Moon. And if you cannot join live, you'll get a copy of the recording. So go to the link in the show notes or my website, astrologybyceleste.com to learn more. And I hope to see you there. The theme of this week is the big reveal. And there are three big things I want you to think about. The first is that Mercury, the planet of communication, transportation, and commerce, will conjunct Uranus, the great awakener that brings shocks and awe, sudden events, unexpected things, earthquakes, at 20 degrees of Taurus, an earth sign associated with resources and values and money and things like that. This conjunction happens every year because Mercury is a fast-moving planet. It moves at top speed about over a degree a day. So it happens every year, and there's typically something surprising that happens. But this one has a special importance because it's going to be related to eclipse season. A big feature of this eclipse season, the solar eclipse at 29 Aries on April 19th, was that Mercury was slowing down to go retrograde. It was at 15 degrees on a world point, just a couple of degrees from the conjunction with Uranus back then and on April 20th or 21st. Depending where you live, Mercury went retrograde. So essentially from our perspective on Earth, withdrew from that conjunction. The technical term is called refrenation, and this is important in horary astrology, which I practice, where it's the astrology of burning questions. When you see like the two significators in a question doing this, where one is about to conjunct the other or make any kind of aspect But before the aspect happens, the retrograde cycle starts. That can be symbolic of people planning to come together for something and then pulling back away from it. The image I'm getting on this is like someone's having a clandestine affair and they almost get caught, but then, you know, escape out the window or something like that is what I'm getting The image I'm getting in my head about the conjunction that almost happened, but now is happening. So stuff that was seeded in eclipse season or even before that could be coming to your intention. Now, hopefully it's not your partner's having an affair or anything like that, but it could be you get a credit card bill and someone's bought something that blows your head off when you look at it because they spent so much money or something like that, or you get like a red light camera ticket in the mail or something like that, and you owe the local agency hundreds of dollars or things like that. It's like a surprise that could be about money or something else for people who have planets around 20 degrees of the fixed signs of Taurus, Leo, 
Scorpio or Aquarius. And my Mercury is at 21 degrees. So I'm interested. Now it's, it's, it doesn't have to be any kind of bad surprise. Someone can find out they're getting a tax refund or an unknown relative or a long lost aunt left them a bunch of money or something like that. So it could be totally a happy surprise, but some big things are likely going to be impacting people on this day. It may not make big news, but be ready for the big reveal. The next thing I want to make you aware of is that Venus, the planet of love, beauty, and harmony, will enter the fiery sign of Leo on Monday until October 8th. Now, Venus usually takes around three weeks a month in a sign, but because it's going to go retrograde, it's staying in Leo for a long time. And when a planet goes retrograde, it has the ability to do some damage and Things just don't work the way you thought they would. There's delays, there's restrictions, things like that can come up. Leo is the sign of royalty. It's the sign of celebrity. It's the sign of vacation and fun times and big events and weddings are a very Leo type event. Yeah, where people put a lot of energy into something to have a big show or a big production. And so they're going to be a bunch of news throughout this transit that I'm really interested to see how it's going to show up when Venus goes retrograde. We know one thing that's happening is this big blob of seaweed has come to the East Coast Atlantic and is likely going to be causing a lot of problems or havoc for people's vacations where either you know, the people who have the resorts are going to be putting in all of this extra effort to clean up this mess, or some people are going to like go somewhere on vacation and it's going to be a big dud because there's a bunch of disgusting, stinky seaweed on the beach. So that's something we know is quite possibly happening during this transit. It's interesting because as soon as Venus goes into Leo, it will oppose Pluto and then square Jupiter. So Venus opposed Pluto. There can be a deep intensity about square Jupiter and Taurus, a luxury item. So I can see someone with this transit, like you must have this designer whatever, or this hot rod car, and becomes Pluto obsessed with having this thing that costs a lot of money and like goes and buys it and then gets in trouble with their spouse and then trying to return it. And there's all sorts of havoc around this. Could be something that someone's experience of this transit. And Venus square Jupiter can be like spending excess money on luxury. And Venus and Leo, a deep love of luxury. A celebrity who's Venus and Leo in the flesh is Madonna. She's very concerned with her appearance. She's an entertainer. Lots of actors are, you know, celebrities have Leo energy because the sun shines through them. The sun rules the sign of Leo. So she's a woman who's a celebrity music royalty. Her Venus is at zero degrees of Leo. So she's really being impacted by this transit. Pluto's been opposing her Venus for a while. And I wonder how that's showing up in her life. Yeah. And she has this Venus square Neptune in her chart. That's the plastic surgery, like trying to remake her face with surgery and her body with surgery. I also can see with this, hopefully she's not going to get something that transforms her beauty forever. Yeah, Pluto transforms. This can be, you know, there are going to be people who get plastic surgery. That's just a catastrophe during Venus retrograde and during this transit. Yeah. So the dates are, so Venus will station to go retrograde at July 22nd at 28 Leo and then it will go direct on September 3rd at 12 Leo. So especially if you have planets in the fixed signs between those two points, be aware that there could be some issues or reversals, delays, or things around Venus and Leo type topics like vacation, friendships, 
it's not Leo, but friendships, relationships, money that can be under a bit of stress and pressure during this time. And importantly, both Mercury and Venus will be retrograde from August 23rd through September 3rd. So I wouldn't plan any trips during this time. A couple weeks on either side is not a good time for a vacation because it just may be some problems. I'm actually going to a wedding during this time, so hopefully it will go off without a hitch, but I'm sure there are going to be some things coming up. So just be mindful of that. Yeah, we'll talk about this more closer to the retrograde, but just be aware of those dates and avoid doing anything important around the retrograde, especially the double retrograde with Venus and Mercury, if you can. The last thing I want to make you aware of is that there's a last quarter moon at 19 degrees of Pisces on Saturday. And the sun in Gemini, Gemini rules the facts, square the moon in Pisces. Pisces is a sign of imagination and dream worlds. So this could be like dreams meeting reality or people like waking up to things, how things really are rather than how they want them to be. The last quarter moon is a time where there's a crisis of consciousness, where we integrate facts and things like that. So just stay present for what comes up for you at this last quarter moon. This moon phase family started two and a half years ago, approximately, when there was a new moon on March 13th of 2021 at 23 degrees of Pisces. The first quarter moon, sun in Sagittarius, moon in Pisces, both at 19 degrees, was on December 10th, 2021. A full moon where the sun in Virgo was opposite the moon in Pisces at 17 degrees for both of them was on September 10th of 2022. And now we're at the end of the cycle. What lessons have you learned? Yeah, look to where you have 17 to 23 Pisces in your chart. You've been getting an activation at the same point approximately in your chart over this two and a half period Do you see a story that has pivot points around the dates? Look two weeks on either side. On Sunday, the word of the day is surprise. We start this week with the moon and the fiery and feisty sign of Sagittarius. Hopefully you had a great weekend. This is the day that Mercury, the planet of communication, will meet Uranus. Mercury also rules our thought processes. So you may get a great idea. Stay present for what you're awakened to. Now, Uranus also has to do with fame. So a writer could have like something they wrote go viral on this day or something like that or around this day. So stay present for happy surprises. I talked about some of the, you know, the negative things that can come of this, but Uranus can go either way. So it's just unexpected. It's sudden. It's like a break with Uranus. On Monday, the word of the day is clandestine. The moon enters Capricorn at 12.30 a.m. Pacific time. Capricorn is cardinal initiating energy. Its energy is focused on like building the foundations and acting the plans in order to achieve and achieve your ambition. So when the moon is in Capricorn, it's a great time to really focus on what your work and your legacy that you're working on building. Yeah, think about that. Venus will enter the sign of Leo at 6.46 a.m. This is the day Venus will oppose Pluto. So there is the potential for power struggles or obsession in relationships or obsession about money, like or obsession about the Fendi purse, things like that. A celebrity secrets could be unearthed in the news around this day. I get the feeling like someone bored on this day will be obsessive about their craft. They could be someone who's driven to be an artist. Venus rules art or some kind of performer, Leo. But I'm getting like Picasso vibes with this. Some intense people potentially could be bored on this day. 
On Tuesday, the word of the day is diligence. There's not much going on in the sky, so the moon is making some aspects. But yeah, this is a great day to like put your head down and just get work done in a methodical way. I really like the energy on this day. On Wednesday, the word of the day is breakthrough. The moon will enter Aquarius at 1.41 a.m. This is fixed air. And then it immediately will conjunct Pluto. So with this energy, watch out for getting too detached. It's a good time to do a body scan. Some people will be going through a roller coaster of thoughts or emotions I'm feeling on this day or something like that. Remember, we don't break down, we break through because the moon is going to set off you know, that fixed T-square where it conjuncts Pluto, then squares Jupiter and opposes Mars and Venus. So it's it's it, this could be intense. This could be when some people find out what's really going on about something. The disseminating moon phase starts at 4.05 a.m. at 2 Aquarius. Disseminating moons are time to disseminate information, what you've learned, what you know, Yeah, just take a a gander through your thoughts about, you can think about Mercury retrograde or or your values, have they changed or anything like that. Look to your Aquarius house in your chart. There may be an opportunity for you to break through in some way in this house. This day could be a little tough. So could Monday have been. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this turns out in the collective. On Thursday, the word of the day is crossroad. So Venus will square the nodes. And we come up to the square to the nodes, there's always a choice. Do you go towards the south node, a point of drain and loss and easy but bad habits? Or do you go to the north node, which put you on the path to where your soul is stretching and your destiny and that sort of thing. And you can think about the South Nodes in Scorpio, being obsessive, being jealous, being possessive, and the North Nodes in Taurus, being methodical, taking one step at a time. Let's talk about sharing the wealth with Taurus. They're both signs that can be obsessive and and focused on material. But anyway, Think about the choices you make on this day could be important. This could be someone schedules their plastic surgery with Mercury and Venus both retrograde, not realizing it, and they make a decision that sets them on a path to a a potential problem. Yeah. So, or you could meet someone and make a connection and like you want to ask for their phone number, but you're too scared and you don't. Do the North Node, take the chance, ask for the phone number. Yeah, and it could set you on a positive journey. On Friday, the word of the day is exaggerate. The moon enters the mutable water sign of Pisces at 3.14 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah, so Pisces is a mute water sign. This is a great time to, this could be like a dream world feeling on this day. Mercury will sextile Neptune. Mercury and Taurus, Neptune and Pisces, both at 27 degrees. Sextiles are opportunities. And in yin signs like water and earth, you have the opportunity to make your own path forward. Yeah, make your own opportunities. Now watch out for deception, like deceiving yourself or anyone else or someone trying to deceive you. This is like Mercury sextile Neptune is like someone's exaggerating how they they caught the biggest fish in the ocean during their trip or something like that. There's Neptune like kind of is the planet of illusions and delusions and can take the facts Mercury and, and weave them up into like much more than they were. Yeah, so think about that on this day. Try to stay connected with reality Now, Mercury and Taurus will be in a trine with Ceres, the asteroid of motherhood in Virgo. So call your mother. Tell her hello. You may like make up a big story about why you haven't called for so long. And if she's no longer with you, just talk to her in your imagination. On Saturday, the word of the day is tension. There's tension between the facts and imagination, dreams versus reality, potentially. 
Now the sun at 19 Gemini will sextile Chiron at 19 Aries. So there can be some opportunity or spotlight on the ability to heal or hurt. So keep that in mind. There also can be for some people like some opportunity drops into your lap because this is a yang sextile with fire and air. Stay present for things about healing. The last quarter moon is at 19 degrees of Pisces on this day at 12.31 p.m. Pacific time. So this is a great day for a reality check. See what becomes clear to you and things like that. Wonderful to go to some kind of performance where music and words come together. Yeah, I'm loving that. So that's it for this week's episode. Feel free to email me at Celeste at astrologybyceleste.com with any astrology and action stories about what's going on in the collective or in your own life, or let me know how the daily themes are playing out for you. Take care and I'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Celestial Insights. To learn more about my work, please visit my website, astrologybyceleste.com, where I offer personal readings, horary consultations, cosmic coaching, group events, and classes to help guide people to higher levels of fulfillment. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook at Astrology by Celeste. If you enjoyed Celestial Insights, please help others find the show. Follow, rate it five stars, or write a nice review. I would so appreciate it. I'm astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks, and I'll be back next week.